GearNetwork.com. The following is a presentation of the Gear Radio Network. Hey, this is HC Loke. You're checking out the All Bets Are Off podcast with Robbie Vegas. What's up, Rock Soldiers, and welcome back to the All Bets Are Off podcast. I'm your host, as always, the rock star, Robbie Vegas, and joining me right now for the second time, but almost a year later, Chris Caden. What's up, man? What's good? What's good? What's good? Almost a year to the day. (laughs) I know, right? That's crazy. 2021, yay. So it's been a weird year since we talked last. We were, uh, I believe the last (laughs) time we uh, recorded together was... The day that everything shut down, we were in a locker room. We got word that everything was getting shut down. Oh, holy <laughs> shit, that's right. <laughs> and we got the option. Do you guys want to go home or stay? And we stay. Goddamn right. <laughs> so tell me something, man. You're one of the head trainers. We talked about this uh, in the last episode at Flower City Wrestling Academy. So what's been going on with training and the trainees at the academy since we talked last? Uh, you know, the, the school has stayed strong. We had to close it for uh, probably a week or two uh, because of the whole COVID deal. But we stayed strong and true. We toughed it out. Uh, we actually had some new recruits come in, which was pretty cool. And we just been busting our ass, just staying, uh, staying strong, staying safe, uh, training heavy, training hard. And, you know, COVID's a bitch, but what are you going to do about that? How about this? Do you have any uh, good prospects that you got your eye on as far as trainees go? Absolutely. Uh, I'm not going to say their names because they might get too big headed. So (laughs) we'll just go with yes for now. And that means that you guys don't deserve to hear that yet. I just want to clarify that. (laughs) Exactly. You green piles of shit. So you're going to do some shooting today. So we're not going to hold back. Don't I always? (laughs) We're not going to hold back anything. But uh, before we get into into your shooting, did you like Santa Jaws? You know, I didn't get to check it out yet. I have to. You did tell me, and I, I absolutely have to check it out. Well, because we were going to name your last episode Caden Loves Jaws. So. Absolutely. <laughs> so It's, it's, it's honest. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you a question, and you tell me the first thing that comes to your mind when I say just these, these few words to you. Uh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> tell me about guys who are 10 years or under in the business. They shouldn't – can I swear on this? Absolutely. It's uncensored. They shouldn't be fucking trainers. Uh, If you have 10 years or under, you haven't engrossed. You have not understood. You have not been in the business long enough to tell someone else what they should be doing. You know this. We're learning on a daily basis. Every day you learn something new in wrestling and – For you to go and try to tell other people what they should and shouldn't do, it's fucking mind boggling. And, uh, it, it pisses me off to an extent being a trainer, being especially longer than 10 years, but you know, having someone like, Oh, you should do this and you should do that. And then I'll come across the person and they'll tell me, Oh, well, you know, my trainer. Oh, who's your trainer? Oh, uh, okay. Uh, what did they teach you? Why? Well, you know, they will, uh, who, where the fuck have they ever gone? Uh, yeah, you're shit. You should never train and just t- fucking stay where you are and keep learning. No, this is a trend that's growing though. in, in the wrestling business is you see these guys who are 10 years or less, they are training and they don't want to take criticism from guys who have been around longer than them. And it's not that in the wrestling business we're criticizing or shitting on someone that's how the business grows as you sit down and you say hey i watch your match think about this this and this but these guys just get offended instead of learning like have have you noticed that same trend absolutely uh you'll you try to give someone some constructive criticism and they'll turn around and be like the uh, the best answer that i've ever heard was hey man you should uh you should really look into this guy you know because i see what you're trying to do but you know you need a little little fine tuning and yeah i know but Yes. Uh, <laughs> that fucking sentence is just, it, 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 it's infuriating when I hear that. It is. And I think the worst part about it is, is at certain companies, you'll see that and not even the promoter will interject and say, hey, you probably shouldn't be doing that because of this. Like they just kind of let the guys have free reign and then their heads start to feel like, well, I know what I'm doing. 
Yeah. Oh, I know what I'm doing. I, you ain't got to tell me. Motherfucker, I, I, uh, I've been doing this for as long as you are born. Like, don't fucking tell me you know, because clearly you know dick. Well, I mean, I was on your show once before, and I told a story where I, I confronted somebody in a locker room whose name doesn't deserve to be dropped on a podcast and told him <laughs> why why what he was doing didn't make sense and what needed to be done to make it better. And he rolled his eyes and walked away from me. And this is somebody who had had in f- a four-year span maybe 15 to 20 matches in, in that many yeah. years. So then there you go. Yeah. It's but it, like it's, right there. And as a trainer, that's got to be frustrating for you because you work at a quality school. Your school has oh, produced. Oh, well, thank you. Oh, of course. And, and your school has produced many uh, amazing athletes over the years, but they're also pumping out great workers still. And you being one of the head mm-hmm. trainers there, when you see that, like, do you often confront these guys or these promoters or what goes through your head? You know, there are guys that I've confronted. Uh, you've been there when I've confronted one in particular, but it was for a completely different reason. Uh, <laughs> he almost got slapped in the mouth, but that's a, that's a completely different reason. Um, you know, being a trainer, you know, now, especially uh, having a lot of people underneath me and trying to learn from me or even just bringing them on the road to show them stuff. And, you know, when you get that, as I'd like to call them, the superstar of superstars, think they know everything, you got to you got to call them out immediately because if you don't, their head is just going to get bigger and bigger and they're going to think they're better than what they are and it's going to turn into a shit star. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. And again, going back to the Flower City Wrestling Academy, with you being there and being a head trainer, do you find more people are willing to listen to you when you go to other promotions and you see things that maybe should be tweaked or changed? I have noticed that now uh, a good amount of people are listening to what I say. Uh, it just, you know, it just took a couple of years, <laughs> but <laughs> it, it they are definitely taking fruit to what I say now, uh, I think it's because one, like you said, they're seeing that we are pushing some really hot talent out there now on top of, they know that I know what the hell I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Um, and I have been places that others haven't been. So I've been given opportunities because I know what I'm doing. And also probably because, you know, it, it never hurts when You'll hear a certain, like, a name come across and they'll be like, oh, yeah, this guy, yeah, Caden. Yeah, I know. I worked him. He's a great dude. And this is like a, a legend or a worker that's been in the business. So when the kids hear that, it's like, oh, yeah, maybe I should listen to what the hell he says. Well, taking that into consideration, I'm going to ask you about a story and I'm going to need you to break this down for me. So you get high oh, praise. Boy. People are willing to listen to you. But then you go to a promotion and they won't even put you on a flyer because they say you can't draw. And this ah yes, <laughs> and this happened to you and your partner Maximo, who's going to be on the show next <laughs> week. So I'm going to ask him mm-hmm. about his version of the story too. So tell me about that. <laughs> <laughs> so all right, so we're booked in this promotion out in Long Island, and uh, the promoter says to me, you know, he's, uh, he really wants us on the show, and I'm like, all right, cool, man. That's you know, I'm really looking forward to uh, coming back. I haven't been to this, haven't been to the area in a while, That, but the area knows me. Uh, every time I've wrestled for them, I've always got a good, good reaction. And it was a return and I'm like, oh man, and now I'm bringing my partner. Uh, yo, you should really promote us because, you know, being that it's a return, I think you'll get a good amount of people because they always ask me, when am I wrestling in this area next? And you know, put us on the card, not even on the card, on the flyer, because, well, you know, <laughs> people will come. And I won't fucking lie to you, because the words out of this guy's mouth were, and I quote, brother, you can't draw in this area. And I just, I was, again, like, completely taken aback. And I'm like, <laughs> what? Yeah, man, you can't draw. I'm like, uh, uh, like, how does that even make sense? You know what? I don't give a fuck. I don't care anymore. Just, yeah, you're right. You know what? Fuck you. <laughs> so <laughs> I told, and then my, Maximo sees it and he's like, bruh, I'm, enough said. So we kind of ran with it. We started making t-shirts with stick figures and in quotations, it was like, I can't draw. <laughs> That's excellent. That is excellent. So, are those, yeah, are man, those still no, for sale? Uh, no, no, there was a limited quantity. Okay. <laughs> um, they went out like hotcakes, which was kind of funny. I mean, that's great. And you said this was in Long Island? Yep, yep. This was uh, for a promotion by the name of Suffolk Wrestling Alliance. I still talk to the promoter. You know, he's, uh, he's doing his thing, but, uh, 
Yeah, he he knows he fucked up. Well, let's stay talking about you and Maximo for a second, because the last time I had you on, we were talking about how you were one of the busier guys on the indies and you would travel wherever you didn't care. And then COVID hit. And that had to be a huge like slap in the face for you, really, because you're one of the busiest guys out there. So how did you handle that? Uh, I still stay on the road. I uh, not as much. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, man, when COVID hit, it took a, a lot of my bookings away because as you know, you can't you can't go to a certain uh, state from New York because uh, Cuomo, as I'd like to call him, Dick. Uh, <laughs> he's made. I literally call him Dick on my radio show. Like, mind you, I can't curse, but his name is Andy, so I just call him Dick. And like, Maximo's like, how do you get Dick from Andy? And I'm like, whatever. <laughs> like, I don't know. Just fuck him. His name is Dick. So. I mean, it's a legitimate uh, first name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dick, Dick, uh, last name Head. But uh, <laughs> he um, he made the regulations that if you go at a state at a, a certain certain amount of states that uh, you have to quarantine. And you know, being that I have a day gimmick, I can't really quarantine because then I lose out on money because I'm not making a lot of money wrestling. You know, mm-hmm. none of us really make a lot of money. Um, if you do, you probably you know fucking good for you, but. Yeah, man, it just kind of killed a lot of the towns that I was going to. Uh, we had a lot of bookings kind of lined up, and that kind of screwed it up for us. So um, I still stay busy. Uh, as you know, I'm still uh, traveling. So, yeah, you know. And you're still training, and you do uh, – what, what, what would you consider the shows that you, you do at the Academy? Because they're not uh, – Exhibition shows. Oh. We can't – we don't – we're not doing shows. <laughs> well, no. We're doing exhibitions. Right, because you're not performing in front of a crowd. You're, mm-hmm. you're teaching, but in, a, in the style of a show. Yes. It's, uh, it, it's considered an exhibition. Uh, we're still running – uh, shows per se, but, uh, you know, it's only in front of, it's basically the fans coming in or not fans. I'm sorry. The workers coming into work in front of ourselves. So it's workers working in front of workers. Now you told me a story and I don't know if you want to put it on the podcast or not, but I'm going to bring it up and you can run with it. If you want, I won't drop any names. You tell me what you want to do. But recently okay. you had an exhibition and somebody got a little, um, somebody who you oh, feel wasn't, wasn't, uh, properly all the way trained, got a little stiff with you. So if you want to share that story, feel free. Ah, uh, so, all right. So, you know, when you throw a wrestling strike, right? We all in the business, you know, we, we open ourselves to take the strike. It's Listen, I'm not trying to break the fourth wall and, and say it's not a work because it is a work. And if you don't know it by now, yeah, <laughs> sorry. Um, <laughs> yes. So I get I, I'm supposed to slide in the ring and punch this guy. Um, I'm, I was told that some of my strikes are a little snug at times. It really depends on who you are. <laughs> so I I strike this guy. I noticed. I, I like I felt something hit me in the face. I didn't think of anything of it. So the match continues. A referee looks at me and he's like, brother, you got color. I'm like, what? He's like, you got color. So I wipe my nose and my whole hand is covered in blood. I'm like, you got to be fucking shitting me. I start wiping my face with my blood. Mm-hmm. Maximo sees me and he's like, how how are you bleeding? And I'm like, literally, while the show is happening, the match mm-hmm. is occurring, still happening. I look for this guy because he's a bitch. And I'm like, because this motherfucker doesn't know how to work, the little bitch. And Mach- <laughs> Maximo's like, yo, uh, we're still recording. I'm like, I don't give a shit. Uh, needless to say, at the end of the match, I look at the cameraman and I scream out, tag team wrestling at its finest, born to wrestle can suck my dick. <laughs> oh my and uh, I then proceed to walk to the back and <laughs> Anthony Gaines is like, hey, Caden, are you OK? And before I like he could say anything else, I scream out, what kind of bitch puts his hands up knowing he's about to take a strike? You little bitch. And find out how to fucking work. And Gaines is like, I'm going to go get my bag now because he thought fireworks were about to happen. <laughs> so the dude sees me and he's like, oh, oh, and I'm like, you're a fucking bitch. And you don't know how to work. Learn how to work, motherfucker. And I walk away. Even Mike, the promoter, had to come up to me and he was like, uh, relax. And I'm like, fuck him. And he's like, all right, cool. 
Good talk. <laughs> I mean, we all have those uh, moments. I know I had one of those moments and you had to tell me to chill too. So. <laughs> yeah, but there are times where, you know, like I probably should have chilled, but you don't like, how am I bleeding from the nose and I'm the one giving the strike? Right. Right. And I so, think we're all fuck him. We're all in the business too. And we know like it's safer to stay open. Um, and that might sound weird for yeah. somebody who's not a, a pro wrestler, who's not trained, but it's, it's honestly safer to stay open. If you're going to take a chop, man, like give him your chest. If you're taking a strike to the face, give him your face because it's when you pull, pull away, flinch, put your arms up. That's when things go wrong. And yeah, some guys are a little stiff and it's going to sting. Well, guess what? You're a pro wrestler. It's going to hurt. Yeah. This is a, this is not fucking ballerina or dance like right it's a it's a contact sport you know you're gonna get hit so don't bitch out like the worst thing you can do like you said is flinch move try to block and uh especially on a chop because if you flinch i'm just gonna hit you harder yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. i agree with that so, i mean take a lariat from a guy like hc loke man yeah that shit hurts and it's gonna knock the wind out of you but you think i'm gonna be safe if i put my arm up instead you're out of your mind Try asking uh, Patty Daddy what happened when he put his hands up on a diving clothesline from Hellcat. He put his hands up. He ended up getting like a black eye. He tried to blame Hellcat. Hellcat's like, nah, bitch, you bitched out. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> Again, going back to how busy you were, how many states have you and Maximo wrestled in? Even just you in general, how many states have you covered? I know I ran into you in Canada. I ended up wrestling in New Vermont when I wasn't supposed to. But like... <laughs> oh, Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> Which is one of my favorite stories that I tell all the time. Like that year I wrestled you and Maximo in, I want to say four different promotions, but they mm -hmm. were every week. So I was wrestling you guys on a weekly basis. I think we did something like 20 matches in a row because we had a feud going at like four different companies. And I drive yeah. eight hours to Vermont and I was supposed to wrestle these guys from Memphis and they didn't come. Mm -hmm. And the promoter looks at me and says, don't worry. I found a backup tag team. They should be here any minute. They're called Defiance. I almost fucking and flipped you're like, the table. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, come on, bro. What the fuck, brother? I just smiled. He said, oh, you know him? I said, I've wrestled him for the last seven weeks. I think we got this. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think we need to call anything. <laughs> no, we, we reverse roles, remember? Because normally we, yeah, yeah, we, yeah. we would be the heels and you guys would be the face. And we were like, fuck it. Let's swap it tonight and do something different. And that's how we made the match different in Vermont. <laughs> yeah, that was the only thing. Yeah, yeah. that was it. But, but how nah, it, was, it was fun, too. It was. It was a great match. And that was actually one of my, my favorite road trips and matches. So that was really cool. But that's um, good. So how many states have you wrestled in in general? In general or yeah. in 2019 uh, or 2020, just, I should say. No, just overall. Uh, let's see. One, two, three, four, about 25, 30. Wow. So you checked off a good portion of the States and you wrestle in Canada also. Yes. And so, I still, well, and they open it up. I'll probably head back. So what are your, what's your wish list then for 2021? Because you, you've already had a great career up to this point. So you must keep setting goals for yourself to keep going strong, right? Absolutely. You got to, you got to stay, you got to stay fresh. You got to, you got to do goals. Cause if you don't, it just, that's when it starts getting boring and you start withering away. Cause you got nothing you want to do. So, mm -hmm. uh, definitely got goals. Uh, I think one of my goals would absolutely be, uh, Puerto Rico. Oh, nice. I would love to wrestle out in Puerto Rico, Mexico. I would love to go out to Japan. Even if it was just to go out for a seminar, just to watch or something, mm -hmm. I wouldn't mind that. Probably go back to the UK. I have been out there one time. Probably a, maybe a, 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 you know what? A heavyweight title as a goal would be nice. I think it would look good around my waist. Well, you heard it here first on the ABAO pod. Just saying. Eh, you know, you know, it's just, uh, it's one of those things that, uh, I, I, I have won heavyweight titles for certain promotions, but, I would like to win it for a certain promotion. You know what I mean? Do you want to kick that promotion's name out there? Or do you want to keep it to yourself? Yeah, I want to fucking, <laughs> I want to be the UPW heavyweight champion. All right, then you're going to be coming after me because that's my goal. <laughs> well, there you go. Fucking, if, you, if it's not your goal, why are you in this business? That's like, come on. Oh, absolutely. That was, that's been my goal for a long time. Before I even got to UPW, I was like, when I get there, this is what I'm going to do. So I'm right along with you. And I know at the beginning yeah. of the year, too, a lot of guys like to make a list of other guys that they'd like to work against. Do you also do that or or do you just keep it to where you want to go? I keep it to – I actually keep that list to myself. I don't really put a list out to people. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think I did it this year as a joke and I wrote some bullshit names on there. 
Yeah. Fuck this one. There are guys that I would. Oh, don't. Oh, we'll (laughs) get to that piece of shit in a little bit. (laughs) Fuck him. I have, you know, there are, there are people, teams in particular that I would like to work. Um, I'll put it out there. I know, uh, I still want to wrestle Dan Barry. I've always wanted to wrestle him since I lived out downstate. I want to wrestle the main state posse. Uh, you probably heard of them. Yes. Well, a little tidbit, and I, uh, I'll be the bearer of bad news, but I gave them their first match. Oh, okay. Uh, they weren't the main state posse yet. They were under hoods, but uh, they were scared shitless. They're such good guys. <laughs> And when they got in the ring with us, they were like, they were terrified. And <laughs> you being in the ring, you know the deal. So, especially with me, mm-hmm. they felt so comfortable afterwards because they were like, bro, you were just, you were so easy. I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> bro, I've wrestled you more than anyone, anyone. <laughs> and in all different kinds of matches, we've had scrambles, tags, singles, yep. rumbles, like you mm-hmm. name it, I've been in it with you. I, I can't even tell you, like, now it's to the point where it's like, oh, I got Caden. Cool. See you out there. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I'll never for, I, I know I bring this up a lot, but I'll never for at, uh, was it UW? Yeah. Oh, my God. You were terrified because you were like, what am I doing? You were like, you were stressing. Your anxiety level was like hitting the fucking roof. <laughs> and they were like, you know what? Uh, you got Caden and it's uh, it's for the title. You're like. Wait, did you say Caden? And you came up to me and I was like, yeah, we'll be fine, kid. Don't worry about it. And you were like, you just said, like, you said it. And you were like, like a weight was lifted off my shoulders. I was like, oh, I'm so, I'm good. Yeah. Yep. I was freaking out because, I mean, since we're shooting, let's be honest, half the roster sucks. It's fucking UW. Yeah. Yeah, I know. So I'm like, damn, man, I got a bad back. And if I got to carry somebody through this shit, I'm going to get hurt. And I was freaking yep, out all day long. And I was like, I'm screwed. I'm going to be in the fucking hospital in the morning. And then they told me it was me and you. And I was like, oh, yeah. Okay. Like, let's stay on more of, um, like, we talked about your career and people you want to wrestle and all that stuff mm-hmm. the last time you were here. But I kind of want to stay more with your knowledge of pro wrestling than your actual career this time. So I'm going to ask you a question and you just take it where you want to take it. So, oh, okay. The difference between deathmatch wrestling and bad wrestlers. Okay. This is a great one. Uh, so I have seen and I, I have been involved in a deathmatch organization. Deathmatch wrestling, there's a certain mystique to it because you really have to be into it. Like, the whole shit that they do is fucking crazy. But bad wrestlers are a whole nother fucking label of themselves because there are bad wrestlers who classify themselves as deathmatch wrestlers. But truth be told, they fucking suck. And all they do is trash. Like, they're not trained. A a good amount of these deathmatch wrestlers have some wrestling training. They have gone to schools before where they're learning. Or by far, they might still be learning. They just took it upon themselves that they like the gore, they like the blood, they like the craziness, they like the attitude that comes along with it. So they started doing death matches. A Ricky Shane Page does death matches, but he can fucking wrestle. Yes, absolutely. Um, like, uh, what's, uh, Matt Tremont does death matches, but he can wrestle. He just retired, but that's all, that's another story. Uh, then you have Stock. Who I was never really a big fan of. Me and him, we just didn't ever see eye to eye. Nowadays, like I see him in the locker room, and I'm like, "What's up, man?" And he's like, "What's good, Caden?" And we we walk our separate ways. Like I, I think we have more, a mutual respect now. But he's another one who he wrestles, but he do, he used to do death matches, and yet he knows the wrestling business. So it's like these guys have a background. They know this shit. They know what makes sense. Bad wrestlers are just fucking bad. Like, they're the cancer of professional wrestling. So would you say these bad wrestlers who go under the disguise of deathmatch wrestlers think that nobody will notice their lack of skill with if they cover it with, like, say, violence? Absolutely. That's the exact reason they do it. Because they don't have any fucking knowledge of professional wrestling. So they're like, well, if I hit a dude in the head with a baseball bat, oh, the, the crowd will fucking, they'll really get it. Uh, no asshole that's just fucking dumb and you're gonna hurt somebody there's a way to do it without actually killing someone and these motherfuckers don't know that yeah absolutely and i over the years i'm sure you found yourself in the ring many times with guys who can't work so how do you personally handle that situation i stay professional but uh the ass whooping in the ring is real that makes sense so you're you're doing you know, <laughs> you're giving them the ass whooping but you're doing it in a way where uh you know they're going to be able to walk away from it exactly 
Yeah. Exactly. It's professional, but it's, uh, it's, it's, it's there. <laughs> it's, it's legit. So have you found a guy where that happened and then they took the lesson for what it was and gotten better? Or do you think most guys just fade away and, and end up just walking away because their feelings are hurt or whatever? I think, uh, you know, it's 50, 50. I've come across guys where I've fucking, I've, busted their noses, I've broken their jaw, but I'll tell them something and they'll do something else. And in turn, they get hurt. Right. Say for instance, Tony Toxic, everyone's favorite reason, right? I tell him, do not turn your fucking face because when I knee you, it's it's there. It's going to be there. If you don't turn your face and you look straight down, I'm going to break your nose. Mm-hmm. Okay. 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 What do you think he did? Mm-hmm. Bloody nose and sti- eight stitches later, you know, I wrestled him again and I'm like, you learn anything? He's like, turn my face. I go, oh, yeah. So he wrestled. We wrestled again. It wasn't bad. It was it was entertaining for what it was. But uh, I know he's still wrestling. I don't know who he's training under, but, uh, you know, hopefully he gets better. I'm not going to shit talk him because I haven't heard anything bad. But, you know, I'm just hoping he takes the knowledge and keeps getting better or he gets the fuck out of the business. Yeah, right. And I can only imagine how it feels being a trainer like that because – as somebody who's not a trainer, just seeing guys who come in and don't care or leave a training school of some sort because they can't hack it and then still get booked on shows and tell people they're a wrestler, <clears throat> that infuriates me because I went through the training and I worked hard to get where I was. But as the trainer watching them do this, and I'm not saying anybody has done this to you, I'm just assuming that it's happened because it's the wrestling business. A guy leaves Flower City because he can't handle it, but you see him getting put on shows and like crappy ass flyers for shitty companies. That's got to really turn your stomach because... Because not only are, is he like slapping everybody in the face who came before him, but he could hurt somebody. Yeah. Oh, that's a, uh, you know, you just talked about Tony Toxic to a T, but that's a different story. Yeah. No, that's definitely what he did. Yeah, man. It's, it's really infuriating when, you know, a guy, you put some, you put time and effort into it. I'm not saying they're the greatest or anything, but you know, you, you spent time, wasted your time to try to help this guy or girl for that matter, mm-hmm. get better. And then they turn around and, you know, whatever whatever their reason is, they're gone. And the next thing you know, they're on a shit show and they're on the flyer and they're winning titles. And it's like, you couldn't even get through day one. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, why are you even still wrestling? You shouldn't even be in a match yet. And I, I'm not just saying this goes for Tony Toxic. This goes for a bunch of people that I've come across, but... Uh, it's, you know, that's the business and it, that shit needs to stop. Uh, this is kind of a loaded question, but what can the wrestling community do as a whole to stop these things from happening? Cause it's becoming too common. If you know, the guy isn't training, call him out. Don't let him be there. Like if you see a guy in a locker room and you know, for damn well, he hasn't done the, the training. He hasn't put time or effort in. I like, I don't even care if he even did it for a month. You know, that as still at least he's doing something. But if you know for a fact he's not going out of his way to get better, fucking call them out because that's the only way these guys will either listen or leave. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And that's not to say that somebody who completes training will never accidentally get, I don't know, stiff with someone because we all know that it happens to all of us. We're, we're it trying. happens all the It fucking, I did a show last night and I got stiff with someone. Did I mean it? No, it just, it happens. Yeah, and and that's going to happen regardless. But we're talking about a different level of unsafe as opposed to getting accidentally stiff. Because when you're throwing clotheslines and punches and kicks and knees, like your adrenaline's flowing, yeah, you're going to tag somebody once in a while. But there's Mm. a difference between dropping somebody on top of their head because you don't know what they're doing and accidentally stinging somebody when you throw a right hand. Yeah, there's a there's a complete difference. You know, like you throw a clothesline. You know, you might tag them because, oh, you know, like you said, the adrenaline's pumping and the moment is right and you're getting into it. You might you might hit them a little hard rather than you aim at someone's throat or you clothesline someone in their abdomen. You right. know, it's like because you don't know what you're doing. Well, let me ask you this, because you are one of the head trainers at Flower City. Um, do you think guys walk away from training and other schools and even Flower City um specifically because of something to do with their trainer? Like, do you think some people just don't get along with their trainer or like the style of teaching doesn't go well with them? Or do you think it simply comes down to uh, work ethic? Like you just want to be a wrestler without going through the steps to be a wrestler? I think uh, it's a little of every one of those things you named. I think there are guys and girls out there who they don't 
quite understand how much work it goes into being a wrestler. So then when they find out, they're like, oh, shit, you know, uh, I can't handle this. Uh, I'm going to step away. And then, you know, they become trash bag wrestler down the uh, 35 minutes down the road. There are other people who they just don't like their trainer for whatever matter. Uh, I know people don't like me because I am very straightforward and they can't deal with that. You know, if I think you're doing something shitty, I tell you it looks shitty, work on it. I know that my way of training, you know, I've, there are times where I'll break things down step by step and I'll explain it to you. Now you might not get it right away. So I'll work with you to get it. Some people don't like being called out. It is what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, Matic, he's a different type of trainer. People don't like him because they feel that he could come off as an asshole. And it is what it is. People, you know, everyone has their own opinions of that matter. He trains different than me. I can't blame anyone if they don't like him. You know, it is what it is. They don't like me. You know, you have your opinion. I'm just trying to get people better. I'm not trying to get people to be like, well, stay here and just wrestle here. I'm trying to get people to be on TV. That's my that's my goal. I would love for one of my kids to show up on TV. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. And with that being said, it's got to be pretty nerve wracking for you when your students start doing shows like that's, you know, for for you and Maddox and anybody else who trains at Flower City. When you start putting these guys on shows, there's got to be that pit in your stomach to see how they do. Oh, oh, most definitely. Like, uh, I remember when the process just started and uh, they're on the show. uh, I'm a little worried because I was like, oh, God, I, you know, I really I want them to be good. I don't want them to to, to blow their shit uh, like, you know, I was really screw their moment up. But you got to have faith in these kids. And that's the thing about me. Mm-hmm. I can't speak for anybody else, but I can speak about me that, you know, when you train with me, I see something in each individual and I'll I'll work towards that. Yeah. And then when they get on that, you know, I really I'm worried, but I have faith. And that's the biggest thing about it. Do you ever think to yourself, like, as the match is going on, like, oh, man, we might have started them too soon? Or have you been pretty much pleasantly surprised? There have been times where there are certain individuals that I'm like, I don't think they were just ready for what they got. Mm-hmm. Um, but I have to say I have been pleasantly surprised mostly everybody that I've ever come across. Awesome to see. And um, in true ABAO fashion, we're going to end this with a couple of uh, common questions that we usually end this with. So I got two more things left for you. First okay. one, tell me what's next for Caden. It's 2021, brand new. You're our second actual interview of the year, uh, Colin Delaney being I know. the first. So, you know, another upstate guy who, uh, you know, went the <laughs> distance. So, um, yeah, what's next for you, man? Continue on pushing out talent at the Flower City Wrestling Academy. Defiance is on the up and up in uh, UPW when it returns. And uh, I'm going to get, oh, I'm going to do as many states as I possibly can. But, you know, that's all with having a child. So that's uh, the most important. <laughs> and congratulations on your first child on the way, by the way. Thank you very much. And hopefully in 2021, we have a singles match that's a uh, main event status. Just saying. Just going to throw that out there. I can see that. I can see that. You know, I can see that. Man, hint, I- hint, booker, booker. <laughs> I know what you're doing. Hey, listen, I was climbing through the ranks when COVID hit, man. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I know. It, it sucks. I know. I was like, I'm in my stride. Everything's clicking. I get this shit. <laughs> Boom, shut down. Bam. <laughs> I'll never forget. We're sitting at a table and we're like, so yeah, we're here. Uh, I don't even know if we should be here. Yes. Like, that's the line of the fucking night right there. Yep. Yep. And that's how we started. It was, I want to say it was like March 12th and I'll never forget uh-huh. it. You're the only wrestling company running in the country tonight. You guys can go home if you want to. Nope. <laughs> nah, we're going to work. And we did. And it was a hell of a show. That bitch was packed to the gills. I it remember was. that. And I remember saying, all right, I'm going to walk right to the ring. I'm not touching anyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was mostly all, everyone's shit. I'm not handshaking anybody. But you know what? It was really cool because the more did we have to deal with that handshake old school bullshit in the locker room. Yeah, right. <laughs> so happy about that. I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to, yo, yeah, good good talk, baby. Yeah, yep, I'll see you yep. later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Peace. And I took it to the extreme. I was like, I'm not even going to go out there to use the public bathroom. I'm going to go out the back door, piss in the alley, and sanitize. <laughs> wow. I didn't know that. That's yeah. amazing. <laughs> I was That's like, amazing. you think I'm going to walk through a crowded room here with all this shit going on? Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. Fuck that noise. 
Well, listen, man, I want everybody to be able to find you as usual. So plug all your social media and, you know, get it all out there because you're super active and you're entertaining to follow. So make sure people do that. No, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, you know, everywhere. It's uh, The Chris Caden. Uh, I have my own website, www.thechriscaden.com. You can pretty much link to everything that I do, Twitter. I'm pretty... I'm pretty fluent on Twitter. I'm on Instagram. I'm on YouTube. I'm always making videos, whether it's cooking, whether it's on the road, when the events pop up. You know, I, I do. I'm a little. I'm a. I'm a Renaissance man. So uh, <laughs> be sure to uh, check me out. I'm at the Chris Caden on everything. And uh, before uh, we end this, I just want to say, you know, um, fuck. Disco Inferno, because yes. uh, uh, I'm going to call him, he doesn't deserve the title Disco Inferno, because he used to actually be entertaining. I'm just going to call him Glenn Fucktard. Uh, that's his name, hashtag asshole. Um, he needs to keep his mouth fucking shut, because uh, he doesn't He doesn't have the right, nor does he, yeah, we're just going to leave it at that. He doesn't have the right to ask the question that he's asking. I'm not even going to go into what he's asking. No, he doesn't deserve Just know it. that he needs to shut the fuck up. And um, for the family, and I don't know where I'm coming from. For their family, they let they need time to really get over what happened. And they don't need a fucking wrestler asking them to do something. They, they, he should just shut the fuck up. And uh, yeah, that's that. 100% agree. And leave us with with some words of wisdom for uh, we're having your partner on next week. So Max oh Suave is going to be here. Is there anything we need to know or anything you'd like to say about that? <laughs> uh, good luck. Um, <laughs> God bless. And uh, no, nah, he's a uh, he's my partner is a uh, he's a good dude. He's got a lot of, you know, he's going through a lot of shit because he was actually close with Brody. Yes, so, he was. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I, I I wasn't as close as everybody else was. I didn't know him like everybody else knew him. Yeah. And uh, it's still fucking sad. But I know to him, he really, he meant the world to him. He really cared for the guy. So he always gave me stories about him. So, you know, he's hurting. So I'm trying to do everything I can to try to, you know, get him through it and just, you know, help him move on because, you know, it's, it's devastating. But, uh, you know, you'll never forget. You can only, you just say goodbye. It's not goodbye. It's I'll see you later. That's what it is. But, 100%. Uh, you know, it's good to have him on. He'll, he'll probably rehash some uh, memories. He'll probably, yeah, you ask him about Long Island, he'll tell you. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, it's going to be a good conversation. You're going to have fun. But, uh, definitely ask him about, uh, ask him about UW, ask him about risk and, uh, you just ask him about wrestling in general. <laughs> he's got a whole little information on that. Hey, he's got a lot of stories that are only for the boys in the back. So we'll try to, we'll try yeah, to steer does. away from those. <laughs> yeah, he does. But yes, he's going to share some Brody stories with us also, because, um, as you know, we did the Brody tribute episode a couple weeks ago Yes, and, um, you know, he wanted to save his specifically for him. So we're going to, we're going to get gotcha. into that too. So, That's so awesome. dude, thank you for being on. This was fun for your second time again, yeah. almost a year when we last yeah, talked, yeah, it was March and we're in January. <laughs> I, Hey, we're almost, I just saw the most positive commercial that I, uh, what was it? Since this shit started in March, it was like, we're, we're at the finish line. I was like, holy shit. I haven't seen a positive commercial about COVID since fucking March. Wow. It amazes me. I better get yeah. my ass in the gym then and get ready to get back in the ring. <laughs> Motherfucker, you better. I've been in the ring every other day at this point. I know. I know. You're 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 still doing your thing, man. So thank you for making time for us, uh, that being said. And, uh, man, we will uh, we'll talk to Maximo next week, and we will see you soon. Absolutely. I'll tell you about how, was it Santa Jaws was? Yes. Yeah, please. <laughs> I will. I will definitely. I'm going to check it out after after we get off here. I'm going to check it out. <laughs> all right, perfect, man. Well, then we're going to do a follow up, and that's all we're going to talk about. Fuck yes. <laughs> all right, man. Be well, and congratulations on the the baby again. All right, thank you very much. Have a good one. All right, rocker. So that was Chris Caden. And before I let you go, I do need you to know that today's episode is brought to you by Kind Bar. Kind is deeply committed to crafting food with real, recognizable ingredients. A disruptive notion that sparked the creation of a new healthy snacking category. Kind is unapologetic in their efforts to challenge the status quo, to shift the food industry, and empower their community and our listeners to make better, informed choices about health. Kindness can be a transformative force for good, and that is why. We are teaming up with Kindness and Podgo to bring our listeners 10% or 15% off for military, teachers, students, first responders, doctors, and nurses. 
go to podgo.co slash kind. That's podgo.co slash kind. Kind bar. Creating a kinder and healthier world. One act, one snack at a time. Thank you, listeners, for always checking out the All Better Off podcast. Share it with your friends. Follow us on social media at ABAO Pod. And we're coming back next week with Maximo Suave. See you then. The preceding presentation has been brought to you by the Gear Network.